The silver shortage is not a myth. The LBMA on their own website posted the numbers showing how much gold and silver they have in their reserves. This chart speaks for itself. The COMEX is the same situation. Actually, the COMEX is in far worse shape than Silicon Valley Bank if the run on physical accelerates. Well, that article was posted last year. Now we're in a new world. Is it continuing to accelerate? Yes, and actually much faster than before. This week's deals at Miles Franklin are the beautiful one ounce silver Krugerrands, only 310 over spot. We also have 10th ounce gold maples, $35 over melt. That's a minimum of four. And last but not least, one ounce palladium bars, only $119 over spot. Email, text, or call me, slayer at milesfranklin.com. We have a massive inventory, all the best prices around. I'd be happy to help. That is slayer at milesfranklin.com. Now let's get into the video. Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like your silver news on a daily basis, then make sure you subscribe here because I got you guys. I'm also doing a huge silver giveaway, picking two different winners. The link's in the description, so make sure you subscribe. Do not miss out. The silver rabbit hole runs very, very deep. There's a lot of murky waters, a lot of shady, corrupt stuff happening behind the scenes, not only with banks, but also with the COMEX as well, suppressing the price, manipulation. So let's dive into why are physical silver reserves suddenly dropping? Because it seems to have just suddenly fallen off of a cliff looking at their own charts. There has been a mysterious drop in silver stocks on major international trading platforms that created quite a buzz. Could it make silver's price surge next year? Here's what you need to know. Silver's been in the news quite a bit lately. First, more than a year after the Reddit-fueled short squeeze, silver's price dropped below the psychologically important $20 per ounce level in September. Then silver started disappearing. Silver stocked in COMEX and LBMA vaults suddenly dropped to record lows, triggering some talks and speculation. So here's the deal. Recently, there's been a record number of withdrawals of physical silver from major trading platforms such as the LBMA and the COMEX. And remember folks, there's not that much physical silver out there for each of those contracts. So it would expose the facade, which is what the Hunt brothers did that pushed prices to $50, which is the highest price silver's ever been still till this day. The official data shows at the end of October 22, the LBMA held a total of 26,502 tons of silver in its vaults. That's the lowest amount of silver since July 2016. And as the chart shows below, the quantity of silver held in the LBMA vaults has been dropping over the past year. And it has continued to drop since this article was posted last year, more than a year ago. Now, almost the same exact thing is happening across the Atlantic. At the end of October 2022, COMEX registered silver vaults drop below 40 million ounces for the first time since October 2017. So both of them, both of the biggest vaults. The graph below shows how COMEX registered silver stocks have literally been falling off the cliff in recent months. I mean, look at that. And it's still declining. Naturally, this mysterious silver drawdown from LBMA and COMEX vaults has created a lot of buzz. The internet is speculating that COMEX registered silver stocks could even fall to 0% this coming spring, with fans talking about the possibility of a new silver squeeze taking place. Now, what happened during the silver squeeze? Well, in late January, early February, a group that came from GameStop and made a whole bunch of people rich real quick transferred over to silver, basically, and created the subreddit group called Wall Street Silver pushing silver's price up dramatically. There was another silver squeeze in May of 2021. This squeeze directly targeted COMEX and physical silver with a plan to get 100,000 people to buy 100 ounces of silver each in a single day. So the internet is all excited about this silver stock drain down. 
but it's not just the people on Twitter who are thrilled. Silver has been a hot topic among experts, too. According to Nikki Shields, head of metals strategy at MKS PAMP, investors appear to be willing to pay five times more for transportation just so they can get their hands on that coveted silver bar. That's pretty crazy. So at this point, one thing is clear. The situation is quite unprecedented. But the question you're probably asking right now is, why is this even happening? That's the good question. As they say, you can never be completely certain of anything in life, but you can always get a pretty good idea of what's happening by asking top experts. We've spoken to Nikki Shields and Mike Durenzio, the executive director and secretary at Silver Institute. Based on what they've told us, we've outlined two possible explanations for this steady decline in silver inventories. Number one, growing de uh, deficit in silver's market. Mike, er, Michael Dorenzio says after years of recording a surplus, we saw the silver market transition into a deficit in 2021. This year, the market is forecast to see a much larger deficit. Importantly, we expect the silver market to remain in a deficit for the foreseeable future and will continue to break more records. Nikki Shield says the silver market is currently in a mild fundamental deficit of about 50 million ounces this year. It's actually 190 million ounces in 20, the following year. We predicted it'd be 140, but million ounces, but the deficit was 190 million. That deficit is expected to grow over the next five years to about 100 million ounces. Wow, that's crazy. Within even one year, it was almost double that. As supply remains rather flat and demand continues to grow. Explanation number two, growing demand for physical silver. Mike Dorenzio, the silver market deficit tells us that silver demand is pretty strong across most key segments. In the industrial market, photovoltaics continue to perform well, offsetting weakness in consumer electronics field. Demand for silver bars and coins has also strengthened this year in all key markets as retail investors respond to high inflation and the war. Finally, jewelry and silverware demand is set to rise, helped in particular by robust Indian buying. Nikki Shields says on this topic of growing demand, physical demand for silver has been incredibly strong this year due to a combination of retail demand and industrial demand. Regionally, demand from U.S., India, Europe stand out with imports into India already at record highs. So in a nutshell, the fact that both the LBMA and COMEX silver stocks are in decline reflects this deficit in the silver market, which basically means that there's more demand for physical silver than what comes out of mines, or simply that someone just wanted to get the shiny one kilogram pure silver bar vat free too much. So I think that we're going to see a lot of people buying more and more silver as the next couple years play out since people really do not trust banks anymore. And with Silicon Valley Bank, the fallout of that, which I'm sure won't be the last, is only going to make people want to take control of their wealth, which the best way, smartest way, is physical metals. See, at the same time, silver is both a precious metal and industrial metal. Its price can also be affected by what's happening with base metals, such as iron, steel, copper, nickel, etc. In this regard, given concerns about global recessions, silver will be weighed down as some base metal prices come under pressure. As a whole, a lot will depend on what the Fed is doing with interest rates and how this will affect the U.S. dollar and yields. Just like gold, the silver price is also impacted by Fed's monetary policy and the overall macroeconomic situation. That's really, you know, what we have to look forward to is this growing deficit with this diminishing supply. And we all know that low supply, high demand pushes the price up. That's just how things go in terms of investing. That is the perfect asset, something that is very rare very scarce but extremely useful and extremely cheap that you can't you know it's it's that plain and simple there's a lot of different options of different types of silver to buy whether it's a round a coin a bar whether it's 90 percent silver whether it's a five ounce bar whether it's a tenth ounce round whether there's so many options out there so it can get overwhelming but at the end of the day i try to tell people you know at least you're buying silver even if you could have got a better coin or better deal or something that maybe you missed out on, 
As long as you're transferring the fake money into the real money, you still are doing something. It's better to have a whole bunch of real money if you got it at a worse cost than save up a whole bunch of fake money, even if it's a lot. So anyways, uh, I'm going to wrap this video up here. I thought this was very interesting. I like that they showed actual data, and you guys can check out these numbers as well. I didn't cover a lot because a lot of information is in these articles right here. You can see 50% of eligible silver is not deliverable, meaning if these people try to turn in those contracts, it would expose this facade of how they manipulate the price. So yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you so much for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.